In this quick video, we're gonna check out the new features in Elementor 2.8, which was released today, December 9th, 2019. They say it's the last update of this decade and it can't get much more dramatic than that. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below this video. My name is Bjorn Allpass from WP Learning Lab, where we help you get better at WordPress so you can earn more for yourself, for your clients, and for your business. If you haven't done so yet, make sure to click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. And we're gonna start on this video right now. This is going to be a tutorial showing you how to use all the new features because it says here, the new version of Elementor was released today, December 9th. On my little timestamp up here, it says December 9th. If I go to the version number, this is version 2.8 that they just released today. But when I go into my Elementor account, I only have version 2.7 as my latest. If I go into my plugins for my website, we only have 2.7 here and here. So I assume later today it'll be released. Probably should be released at the time of the blog post being posted, but that's okay. The features aren't that extensive, so I can still walk you through them without actually showing you exactly how they work. You'll see what I mean in a minute. So first we have new color picker options. So on every color picker inside of Elementor, you're now gonna have this color palette that you can add colors to or take them off of and sort them by dragging and dropping. There's some animated GIFs down here. You can just add colors. You can have an unlimited number of colors. There is no limit. Have as many as you want and just easily click on them to apply that color to a different part of the website. And this is throughout your entire Elementor site. So these palettes that you create on one page will follow you to another page. However, unlike other page builders, if you change the color selection on say an H2, that doesn't apply to all the other H2s. So you still have to go through and do manual changes if you're doing site-wide color changes, but at least there's a palette that can follow you around to make those changes a little quicker. And to trash them, to get rid of colors from the palette, just drag and drop them into a little trash can icon, and you can rearrange them. So to step forward. I assume pretty soon they're gonna have a feature like Brizzy has where you can set site-wide styles where you can easily change all the colors, all the fonts on the entire site if they are in a certain type of tag on the page. I assume that's coming. It's gotta be, because that's a great feature. Another feature is dark mode. We are very familiar with Elementor. That looks like this, the light mode that we see on the left here. And now we have dark mode as well. There is no button inside of Elementor to turn dark mode on and off. If we go to our system settings, under general, I can switch my Mac to light and dark. And there'll be something similar in Windows. I don't know, quite know where it is, but there's gotta be something similar. And that change from light to dark inside the system settings, that's what's gonna change the color for Elementor. A lot of apps are adding the dark mode. It's a nice feature, especially when you work at night. And so that is being added. As you can see, they're switching right here in this little GIF. That's being added in version 2.8, which hopefully will be released when you watch this video later today. And I'm pretty sure that'll be available for the free version and the paid version. The color palettes, I'm pretty sure will be free and paid. And this next feature is for the premium version only because only the premium version has responsiveness settings and it allows you to visibly see which objects or which rows or which sections or which elements are hidden on whatever viewport you're working on. So in this example, they're working on a desktop viewport and they're hiding this image on desktop right here. We can see them clicking on that it hides it and grays it out. So you know which elements are not visible in that particular mode. And if you switch to a different mode, say tablet or phones, you'll then be able to gray out certain things on there and it just grays them out instead of taking them away. And then you can of course look at the preview of the page and those will not be present for whatever specific viewport those are hidden on. The device switcher is another change. This is the device switcher here. It currently works in horizontal mode. So if you switch from mobile to desktop, the switcher runs horizontally. Now it runs vertically with the new update. Like I said, update's not here yet, but it should be here today. It should be here right now because I'm reading the blog post that announces it, but it's not. So the switcher is now going vertical and they are promising that this takes us one step closer to super amazing features that have been requested, including custom breakpoints. So that's nice. And the last thing, we have to connect to Elementor templates library manually now. If you already have Elementor Pro, you're already connected right away, you don't have to worry about it. If you're using the free version, you probably have to click on get started and create a free personal account, as it says right here in the screenshot, and then log into your library. 
I know it's annoying, but they are promising other features in the future. Here it says with this new smarter library, as they call it here, it will incorporate remote access, login capabilities, and more personalized experience in the future, including favorites and recently used. So they're adding more features to the library. They want to prevent abuse of the library. And so they're making it so people have to log in, create a free personal account. And like I said, if you have Elementor Pro already, you don't have to worry about it you're logged in connected immediately. If you want to get Elementor Pro, you don't have it yet, there's a link in the description down below. It is an affiliate link. I do get a small commission if you buy through that link, but it does not make it more expensive for you and helps me keep making these videos. And if you like Elementor or you want to learn more about it, check out this video over here where I show you how to recreate an awesome looking header using Elementor. And also make sure you click subscribe, ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. And my name is Bjorn Allpass from WP Learning Lab. Until next time, keep crushing it and I will see you in the next video.